Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Guys, there's a couple of things I'd like to talk to you about and, and, and the reason I, I speak about this is because this has become uh, an issue of note and it doesn't matter where you are in the world uh this is a topic that has received a lot of attention and if you are an african if you are worth your african salt this story should matter to you and i'm talking about the Zimbabwe gold gangster story. For many years, we've known that the mining sector has always been a very contentious sector because there's, there's lots of money involved in that sector. And what breaks my heart more than anything else is that by and large, the average African doesn't know how the mining industry works. And this is where the problem is. This is one of the problems because largely uh, black Africans don't know how their minerals are extracted, how they are sold, how they're exchanged, how they cross borders, who profits from them and how it translates into their well-being. Most Africans don't even think about that. And because that gap or that void that vacuum exists that is precisely the reason you've got gold gangsters that take advantage of the lack of knowledge the word of god says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge if you don't know how are you going to know maya angelo used to say when you know better you do better but if you don't know better you can't do better so here it is the other day sitting at home watching uh, an investigation that has been underway for quite some time. Al Jazeera, a reputable news source, conducted an extensive investigation into the way Zimbabwe's gold is being stolen, smuggled, and sold with the stamp and approval of people within the government, namely Emerson Munangagwa, who is now the new president, of Zimbabwe, who he, he's just as bad as Robert Mugabe. Robert Mugabe and Mr. Emerson Munangagwa are cut from the same cloth. They're crocodiles that emerge from the same river. Gangsters that are products of the same ring. So you cannot take new skin, new wine, and pour it into old wine skin. It doesn't make any sense and so because this new president of zimbabwe mr emerson munangagwa is a byproduct is a derivative of robert mugabe a man that claimed that all he wanted to do was empower his people when really underneath it all all he ever wanted to do was to empower enrich himself his associates and to hold on to power as long as he could he held on to power almost to the day he died that was his goal everything he ever said about zimbabwe everything he ever said about the prosperity of zimbabwe everything he outlined about empowering the zimbabwean people was all camouflaged and cookie 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 cut with the idea and the goal 
to embezzle money from his own people, his own country resources to enrich himself and his associates and his family. Forget the country. Robert Mugabe didn't care about the Zimbabweans. He only cared about himself. Emerson Munangagwa only cares about himself. Doesn't care about the Zimbabwean people. And so here it is. The Al Jazeera has done this investigation and they have unearthed a, a gold smuggling scheme that is benefiting a handful of Zimbabweans. Now, you can argue, and rightly so, you can argue that the very same thing that's happening in Zimbabwe is happening in other countries of Africa. And I agree with you. The same thing is happening in Nigeria. I posted it earlier today. Nigeria has one of the largest oil reserves in, in, in the world. But look at Nigeria today. Nigeria is a cesspool of confusion. Nigeria is the bastion of lawlessness. Why? Because you got a bunch of people over there that they don't care about the country. They only care about themselves. So it's come out now that Al Jazeera staged a, a, a buying, a meeting with this Uber Angel, who is the ambassador at large, Zimbabwe's only ambassador at large. Now here, let me throw this up here so that you and I are on the same page. This man, Ubert Angel, a man that calls himself a prophet when he's anything but a prophet. There is nothing prophetic about him. There is no iota of God in him. There is nothing about him that speaks of spiritual integrity. Everything about this Uber angel is camouflaged under a, a, a blanket of deceit. And what's really sad about this is that he uses the Bible. He uses the word of God. He uses the canon of scripture. To deceive and hoodwink people when really he's just a two-bit hustler that's all he is a two-bit hustler in a thousand dollar suit ubert angel he is the ambassador at large now let's define zimbabwe's ambassador at large what that simply means is a minister of the highest rank not accredited to a particular foreign government or sovereign in other words he can do whatever whatever the hell he wants and he does it with the full approval of the head of state if you look at that video and you can you can look at that it's all over you don't even need me to source that for you you guys are smart people you know exactly how to navigate through the internet all you have to do is search uber angel gold smuggler gold thief vagabond a man that is entrenched in criminality that's all you do is is, is search that and you'll find it it's all there in black and white and full color for the whole world to see how this man sits in the presence of people he thinks are chinese gangsters that are trying to launder money and he begins to talk to them and says, when I speak, Uber Angel says, when I speak, I speak for the president. When I sign, I can sign anything in the absence of the president. The president will approve it, which tells you that everything that Uber Angel does is approved by the head of state of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe today is drunk with corruption. Let's 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 go ahead and just put it out there. Zimbabwe today is steeped in corruption because you've got a, a whole history. You've got a back history of 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 ZANU PF. ZANU PF, a political party that was specifically designed to cripple a nation and to subdue its people and vanquish them and make them feel less than in exchange for the profit and the enrichment of a few. Zimbabwe 
Zimbabwe that used to be called the breadbasket of Africa is now a shadow of its former self. It's a has-been, it's a rumor. It's a country that is literally hanging by a thread. Zimbabwe. And you've got these jokers. Emerson Munangagwa, who really shouldn't be there. If the, if, the, if the Zimbabwean people were to stand up in unison, get rid of these criminals, get rid of these vagabonds, get rid of these bottom feeders, get rid of these gangsters. And you can do it, Zimbabwe. We did it. You can do it. Get rid of anything that has PF on it. ZANU PF. Get rid of that thing. Remove that cancer from your nation. Remove that thorn in your flesh. Because if you don't do it, Zimbabwe, you're going to lose yourselves. You're going to lose your identity. People like Ubert Angel, who call themselves God's representatives. God does not hear from Ubert Angel. God does not recognize who he is. The only place that recognizes Uber Angel are the pits of hell. Gehenna. That's where his name is floated. That's where his name is known. Are you hearing that? And so, Uber Angel now has been caught into this thing that we, we for, for years we've known. We've known that he's involved in this sort of skullduggery he's involved in smuggling he's involved in money laundering and we're talking about multiple a multiplied multiplicity of multitudinous tens of millions of u.s dollars money that could have gone to improve the lives of the zimbabwean people but oh no these jokers wake up and they pocket this money in broad daylight and the Zimbabwean people watch this with their eyes wide shut. Zimbabwe. Now which brings me, which brings me to Zambia. Because let's, let's be honest. If this sort of skullduggery and gangsterism is happening next door, it stands to reason that there are elements within the Zambian mining sector that have a huge question mark on them. If you listen to the, the documentary, there's a line that I picked up in there that is, it will literally shake you in your boots. It will make your spine quiver. And the line is, the gold mafia is bigger than the government. The gold mafia, the mining mafia, emeralds, precious stones, that industry, that sector is bigger than the government. It's bigger than any one president because the, the network of criminality is woven within the fabric of these gangsters. If you ask the average Zambian, how is, how is copper mined in Zambia? Zambians don't know. You ask the average Zambian on the street, what is the price of copper on the international market? We don't know. You ask, the only thing Zambians know are Savenda, KCM, Mopani, Japa. Ask the average Zambian to elaborate. We won't know. And because we don't know, there are people, there is a clique of thieves. To borrow the words of the current president, President Hagainde Hichilema. There is a clique, there is a syndicate, gangsters, that run this show and we know nothing about it. This revelation by Al Jazeera is but a tip of the iceberg i know in zambia we don't have icebergs so let me put it this way this is this revelation is simply a tip of a huge mountain that we know nothing about it's been going on for years they didn't start yesterday they didn't start last week thursday 
They've been running this gold scam and this money laundering activity for many, many years. It's just now come out. Which begs the question. How is this, the mining sector being handled in Zambia? Are the minerals that are underneath our soil, our God endowed minerals, are they there to benefit us? Or are they there to benefit a handful, a clique of thieves? It breaks my heart, man. It breaks my heart. Earlier today, I posted something that I know is controversial. But boy, I tell you, it's the truth. Over there in South Africa, this is just a, an example. When the Boers went into South Africa, they found all of these precious stones and gold. They invested that money into that country. That's the reason that country reached the level that it reached, and it reached in terms of development, infrastructure development. It's because those guys, they, they took what was in the ground and, and they did the right thing and they invested in their country. <laughs> Why can't we do that? Now, I know some of you argue and say, well, the British came in here and they stole our gold. Well, that was a different time. In those days, we didn't have the legal framework that we have today. During the time of colonialism, they had the upper hand. We didn't. There was no proper framework. There was no proper structure that ensured that the minerals stayed here and benefited the Zambians. The, 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 the framework was different. But now we are the captains of our destiny. We run the show, or at least we're supposed to. We're in the seat of power. We are no longer colonized by anyone. So remove that excuse from the table when you say, well, the white people came here and they stole our stuff. Yes, they did at that time. It, it, it's, it's different now. It's like, it's like someone complaining. You have, a, you have an iPhone 14 in your hand. And then you look at somebody and say, well, why are, they, why are they using a rotary phone? Remember those phones with the with the ring where you did this? Well, the reason they used the rotary phone in those days is because they didn't have an iPhone. Things are different now. We, my point is, we are the captains of our destiny now. So because we are now in the driver's seat, it stands to reason that we should do things that benefit our nation as a whole. But oh no, not these black people. Black people wake up and say, what's in it for me? Mark, you better not shut me down. Please don't shut me down. I know Mark's going to, Mark Zuckerberg gets all flustered when he hears that. But let's be real, man. Let's be real. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Something's desperate. It's desperately and desperately wrong. And, and, and when I saw this documentary, Man, I tell you, it, it put the fear of God in me. Because I thought, if that's happening in Zimbabwe, what is happening in Zambia that we know nothing about? And we should get Al Jazeera to come over here and do some investigation on those click of thieves. You'll be shocked what would come out of that. All right. That's what I wanted to tell you. That's what I wanted to tell you. James says... The gold mafia is bigger than the government. Because we've allowed it. We've allowed it to run amok. We have allowed it to run astray. We've allowed it to bamboozle us. Over a long period of time. And now when we look back, it's, what, 50 plus years later. How do you fix something that is entrenched in the fabric of a, of a country's being? It's a cancer that needs to be removed, but the removal process, oh, it's painful. Painful, but something has to change. Africa needs to change. The Congo, endowed with so much uh, 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 mineral wealth. Look at the Congo, it's a mess. Look at Nigeria, a mess. Look at South Africa, a quintessential mess. Look at Zimbabwe, a failed state. Self-imposed. 
Something's wrong with black people. Something is wrong with black people. Zimbabwe, remove that Munangagwa. Remove him. That's what I wanted to share. Peace. Love. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondo. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.